Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Panini Rookies and Stars 40 box cereal box break, cereal box edition. Pick your team number two with $1,000 of break credit being given away. You gotta buy at least two teams, right? Yeah, the usual buy two teams, blah, 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 blah. Top two will get 500 bucks each. Um, it says no vet commons chip, but I think that's incorrect. We're gonna have all card chip. How about that? All cards will ship. All right. There's the cereal box case. Thanks everyone for making that happen. I appreciate it. All right, here, all the people here. Appreciate it. Here on Tuesday the 12th, 40 boxes. Now, if you have a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in a filler. Larry has double last spot mojo. I think he got Dallas and, and the Eagles before we pulled the remaining teams for the filler. All right. Now, it seems like a lot of boxes, but remember, it's only one pack per box. So this might actually go a little bit faster than I initially thought, but let's see what we got here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the cereal boxes, probably the autographs are fewer and far between in these, in these retail sort of sets. But I think maybe some nice parallels is what's, excuse me, is what we're, uh, what we're looking for here. All right, so it's a big pile of boxes here. We're going to open up maybe a handful at a time. We'll do ten at a time. Seven. Rex is saying Eminem has a new album coming out on August 8th, August 5th. What's been going on in the NFL world lately? I feel like we're just in limbo. All the, all the, uh, the little training camps, the mini camps are over. Teams taking another little break again before they ramp up the proper training camp. Bears apparently, uh, well, first of all, Le'Veon Bell won't play the NFL in 2022. He's gonna focus on boxing. Give me a boxer now. Bears apparently get Patriots wide receiver Nikhil Harry for a seventh rounder. This should be a fun quarterback battle to watch. Uh, Baker Mayfield versus Sam Darnold in Carolina. An open competition apparently. Gronk reiterates retirement. He's done with football. Until the middle of the season when Tom Brady is like, I need you. These rookies and stars can be a little slippery. All right, good luck, everybody. 
This is Mac Jones. Some Josh Allen. I guess these, I think, are the <clears throat> these little hyper parallels. I think are the exclusives to this set. All right. So who has the Patriots? Jeff with the Pats got got the got a big haul in that filler. It's Mac Jones here as well. Star studded Mac Jones, and he gets the Jets as well. So obviously these retail sets all about the parallels. You want to see some big parallels. There may be a hit here and there. Nice Trevor Lawrence. That will be for... <clears throat> That's for Jeff and the Jaguar. A lot of big teams in that filler. Justin Herbert. Tom Brady. So Sam Darnold, <clears throat> open competition with uh, with Baker Mayfield. Who, do we, who are we giving the edge? Are we we're giving the edge to Baker, right? I feel like maybe. Maybe Baker Mayfield perhaps was unfairly judged last year because he had that uh, he had that non-throwing shoulder injury, which I feel like bothered him and hurt his production all season long. There he is. So if he's healthy, I feel like he can, he can, he can start. And he can do some damage. More Mac Jones for Jeff. Here's Justin Fields, Bears. That's also for Jeff. Rookies and Stars. Jeff with the Jets. Got a big haul in that winner take all filler. Tyler saying Malik Willis is behind a uh, a practice squad QB in camp. Kane's asking on these breaks, what determines which cards get sent out? Well, in this particular break, the description is all cards ship, so everything ships, but. If this was a no vet common ship, I think these are all rookies and stars. is is unique in that everything's kind of either a rookie card or an insert. So I think it's hard to kind of say, but but sometimes some base heavier breaks will say will say vet common won't ship. That's more that's common in say like contenders football. Or something like that. So that's really mostly about the, the autographs and contenders football. Most instances we do end up shipping everything. So we're at about the 9.30 mark. I did 10 boxes. So 10, 10 boxes, 10 minutes. So about 40 minute, 45 minute break. Okay, I think I, I think I timed this. I think I timed this right. No, no worries, Kane.
Rex, what's up? So with football, do any play player change positions like the way they do in baseball? No. Generally not. Like in basketball, obviously the 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 advent uh, the idea of positionless basketball has has grown has grown quite a bit where centers can play outside and shoot threes and and all that sort of stuff. Um, in baseball, obviously you got you can have infielders playing the outfield, outfielders playing the infield, catchers playing you know anywhere. But in football, no, just just not not nearly as common. I suppose you can have well wide receivers will just be wide receivers. But I suppose you know there are the wide receivers who are like you know, like Tyree Kill, that are really fast and can stretch the field. And then there are the bigger wide receivers that, I forget, there are, there are letter associations to these. Someone who's more in tune with football position and coaching maybe know these X's and O's. But, but there are receivers that, that, depending on size and speed, will also have certain roles. I don't know, football's kind of weird. They kind of lock you in. You know, you, you kind of get locked into a position. I think sometimes... Offensive line, some of the more versatile offensive linemen can switch between, you know, center, guard, and tackle. But, so that's relatively common. That's, same, that's still the same position group. It's not like you're not going to see a, a, a tight end become a running back, you know, or something like that. Yeah, on the college level, yeah, in high school, college level, I feel like there's a lot, there's still a lot more room for, for maybe doing different positions, like Justin's saying. But by the time you reach the pro level, they kind of, they kind of lock you into your your position, which is kind of interesting. Which is kind of interesting because. Um, Tight ends in recent years, in the last 15, 20 years or so, they've grown to be as as more uh, has grown to be pass catchers to the point where where some some tight ends can produce as much as a wide receiver in terms of catches and yards and touchdowns. So that gets tricky when they're doing when they're doing the franchise tag, where the franchise tag tags you for a year. Preventing a player to go into free agency or whatever. That's the simple explanation. But they take the average of the top five salaries, right? And they'll be averaged out. And then that would be your one-year salary if you're franchise tag. So there's been cases where – I think Jimmy Graham was a famous case, right? Where he was considered a tight end, but he was producing like a lot of top wide receivers. And when he was tagged, he was – he was like, well, no, I feel like I should be getting, I should be paid like a wide receiver. I, don't, I forget how that turned out, but so it gets a little tricky in that situation. But but yeah, I think yeah, I mean, I think those position changes, Rex, happen pretty early on. I think once you're in the NFL, I don't think that changes. So like, yeah, a famous example: Julian Edelman was a QB in college, but. By the time he reached the NFL, he was just he was a wide receiver. Yeah, he'll do he'll play quarterback, he'll do trick plays here and there, but but once he got once you convert to a position it kinda it kinda sticks. Also, I think each position is so different. It's it's just mentally I think it's just it's just mentally difficult to be like, oh, Let's learn the quarterback position. Oh, and then I'm going to... I guess quarterback to wide receiver could translate. But then to be a quarterback and then be like, oh, now I'm going to turn to wide receiver and learn route trees, you know, and figure out how to do all that. 
and be a route runner. It's like such a completely different skill set. It's just not common. So I, I suppose you just have to be just a physical just a physical beast to be able to play multiple positions well. So yeah, not not quite like baseball or basketball where positions have become a little more fluid. But that's what makes the NFL so unique. is that each individual position is just so highly specialized. Maybe defense, you get a little more flexibility, right? Maybe you can have a, it's still a little different, but you can have like a strong safety, maybe turn into a linebacker or a defensive end. It could drop back into a linebacker or something like that. So you, can, you might have those little subtleties, but defense might have a little more flexibility. But offense... Ah, that's a good one. But I mean, it's rare, right? The, the, like we're, we're Debo Samuel, wide receiver, running back combo. Coral Patterson kind of does that too. So you're kind of seeing that position change a little bit. Right, where maybe you're seeing wide receivers, right, wide outs. Let's see if that's the line of scrimmage. We see wide outs who can come in into the backfield as running backs or vice versa, right? From the backfield to, to a, like a slot receiver or something. So you kind of start seeing that happen with the running back position a little bit. But otherwise, no, it's, it, the, those, those situations are pretty rare. Right, yeah. You know, like, like the running back who can move into like a, a slot. Let's say these are players right here. This is the center. You know, you can be a running back, you can move into a slot receiver position. You don't really see them go wide out, but you can do that. Correll pass and Debo Samuel can do that, but again, pretty rare. Pretty rare. You're not going to see that happen too often. Not too many people are capable of handling handling that. You know, the, the running back has a completely set of different plays than the wide receiver, you know, on, on running downs, on running plays, on passing plays, everything. The block, blocking's different, everything's different. But yeah, I guess the running back position has slowly kind of kind of incorporated some some more wide receiver concepts. So that's becoming a little more common. Uh, you're not going to see like a quarterback play like safety, you know, in the same season. You know, that's just not going to that's just not going to happen. <laughs> like Pat McAfee was a punter and a place. I mean, that's kind of the same position group, though. Yeah, that running back position has really changed a lot. Has evolved from or is. And we may, we may, you know, so I, sports runs in cycles, right? So I believe that there'll be a there'll be an era where, you know, where it'll kind of cycle back to the big bell cow running backs that we that we've known in the past that we have seen in the past. But right now we're kind of in a mode where, where, you know, teams are valuing valuing running backs that can that can uh, be can run some more run routes a little bit better. You know, run outside the tackles and or run outside for passes, stuff like that. You start to see that more often. But you know, the the the, the we all know this. The shelf life, the average shelf life of a running back in the NFL is fairly short, unfortunately.
So I guess nowadays you're you're starting to see a lot more teams deploy multiple running backs just to preserve the the the, the lifespan of the running back, the health of the running back, and yeah, maybe put a, put them put them into more receiving positions just to limit the hits that they're taking. All right, next 10. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I must have, done, must have done an extra box at some point. But anyway, almost there. So a lot of Trevor Lawrence's here for Jeff. And all of these will be top loaded before they go out. Jeff also has the Bears, too, getting all those Justin Fields. He has the Jets getting all those Zach Wilsons. Those are the key guys. Now, for everybody else, Jeff has Jeff has the Steelers. He, he's getting the Najis. Larry has the Eagles. So we, we saw a number of Devonta Smiths in here, all card chips. So you'll be getting all of those. Mac Jones, Patriots, that's also for Jeff. Man, he's, he's got all the big quarterback names, huh? Davis Mills, Jeff as well. I think he should be your QB1 by the time the season starts. Patrick Peterson, Justin saying was last player, think played both sides, but that was for one season in Arizona, and then never again. Yeah, you know, uh, kind of in a in an interesting way, NFL players get paid too much nowadays. You don't you don't want your franchise quarterback like playing wide receiver too often. You know what I mean? You don't want your star wide receiver playing running back or your star running back. You know, playing a position that that he's not used to. You know, so players get paid pay too much to 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 be experimental. You know, they're just like, hey, we've got your position. We here's what you need to do. Be good at that. Bengals. Jeff also has the Bengals. Man, got a lot of the big teams here. No one grabbed the big teams? This is a great break to just kind of collect all of these like QB names and other up-and-coming stars here. Just grade a bunch of these. Just eyeball it and then grade a lot of these and if you get some PSA 10s out of here, that's going to be pretty nice. Besides QB, what's the toughest position? I don't know. I think that's a tough question. Like, you know, you can make the case for any position to be the toughest position. So, I don't know. That's I think that's personal preference. You know, I think... Uh, I think football is so unique in that it is probably next to, like, Next to like soccer, maybe it's probably the the most team sport out there. You know, baseball is baseball is a team sport, obviously, but there's it's still a lot of individual actions against an individual action. You know, a pitcher versus a single batter. But NFL teams, you have to work in concert for that whole thing to to flow. You know, you can have the best quarterback in the world, but if you have a garbage offensive line, no one to throw it to, then you're then you're wasting that uh, 
then you're wasting that that quarterback basically. So, but I mean that's what makes the NFL so great. Oh, the hardest on a player. Well, running backs. That's why the, that's why running backs on average have the shortest you know career lifespan of any position. I mean, it's it's shocking. I I think I think wide receivers can still average around maybe four to seven seasons on average. Linemen can last seven plus seasons. Defensive linemen can last seven plus seasons. Quarterbacks can easily last ten plus seasons. But the the average shelf life of a, of a uh, of a running back, I think it's, it's like shockingly slow. I think it's like three to four four seasons or something like that. Oh, there's a box back there. You know, so... When you're, you're a running back, it's, it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's... Let's say you've got... Right? That's the center right here. Here's the quarterback and the running back, right? Back there, here's the QB. You know, and if you're running through through the A gap or the B gap right there, the first thing you're facing, you gotta first get through your big guys, try to climb through there. And then back there, there's, you know, Defensive lineman, defensive lineman, defensive lineman right there. In this second level, there's some linebackers back there. All all waiting to and you're taking the first big hit right there. There's just like there's no open space. You're running into you're you're just you're just running into big dudes all over the place. The wideouts, they're 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 off to the sides. I mean they they can get hit, especially maybe the guys that go over the middle. But yeah, I mean that's a that's a rough position. That that that's a tough position to play. All right, final ten. There you go. Thanks. Justin's pulled up the numbers. Running back average two and a half years in the league. Wow, even shorter. Then it's wide receivers two to three years in the league. Oh, those, the wide receiver's a little bit shorter than I thought. Also, I guess there's more wide receivers, too. How many more years do I see Lamar producing decent numbers? Decent numbers? I think he'll, I think he'll put up decent numbers for a while. But we're not expecting decent numbers from a Lamar Jackson, right? We want MVP caliber numbers from Le Lamar Jackson. I don't know. At some point, and I think he ha he does work on this because I think his his throwing his accuracy has improved from year to year. You know, I think he just has to be, and I think he is, but I think he has to be even smarter about about running the ball. You know, learning how not to to absorb hits better. Which I think he already does a pretty good job at. Different from RG3. Remember, RG3 would just think he's like a freight train. And that kind of resulted in a lot of his a lot of his injuries. But Mark Jackson seems pretty crafty. But he, he should he should look at, you know, and I'm sure he's working on it. And he has worked on it, but I'm sure he wants to be able to be more of an under center be under center passer, which he did a lot more of last year. He, I think he was under center a lot more than he had ever been in his first first couple years. So they are kind of developing him into that. But I like Lamar Jackson a lot. I, th I, th I think they're doing a really good job with him. You know, so he can kind of give you a new look every year. You know, first year he's like a dynamic playmaker. And then second, you're all you're all of a sudden like, oh, he's using his arm a little bit more, you know. That's 2018, 2019, 
2020. I think he puts a little bit all together. I think he was it MVP 2020, something like that. And then 2021, you're like, oh, he's under center more often. And then all of a sudden, there's another new look you have to worry about with Lamar Jackson. So he's like, he's kind of, it's kind of cool because he can kind of be a, a, a good starting quarterback and a development project at the same time. He's still pretty young. So if they if he can keep naturally progressing from season to season, I mean that that's a that's a good thing for the Ravens and for Lamar Jackson collectors. Sort of like Josh Allen, right? Everyone's just like Josh Allen was just kind of all arm, but not, not much else. But now Josh Allen, every year he's developed into he's added a new weapon. He's cleaned up a part of his game, so it's pretty exciting. Kane says, as a Chargers fan, watching Herbert roll out the pocket scramble, you'd be clench clenching your job. So scared that he get banged up. Yeah, he may take he may take a little. That might be something he needs to clean up in his game too. He may want to not not take those unnecessary hits. Mahomes kind of kind of did that too. Imagine how the GM and owner of the Bengals felt about Joe Burrow last year. I know. Well. They, I mean, they did their, they did what they needed to do in the offseason. They, they addressed the offensive line issue. So hopefully, Joe Burrow doesn't have to take those sacks last year as as much as he did. Uh oh no, that was for that was for a. Uh, that was for the previous box. Break 12 sold out outright. You know what, Kane? I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of bullish on the Ravens this year. They had such a What do they call it? Um, NFL win total. Uh, like cluster injuries or something like that. So I think they probably, you know, they just a lot of injuries to a lot of key position groups, and it was like cluster injuries, big big sets of injuries at a time, which obviously did not help them. But they're at nine and a half wins. I, what's the AFC North looking? It's just. Bengals. Bengals will win the division most likely. Bengals win total is ten. Ravens win total is nine and a half. So about the same. So I, I, I think I think Ravens are are a team to team that could surprise a lot of people if they're healthy. You know, and maybe moving on from the from Marquise Brown might actually help them too. Sometimes I think they I think they intentionally maybe sort of force the ball to Marquise Brown in an effort to, to stretch the field and you know he Marquise Brown could have done a little bit better there too. But that could be a pretty interesting team. I'm excited. Preseasons, official preseason about to start soon. We're going to start seeing, uh, I think, of high hopes for this guy, too. With the coaching issues in, in Jacksonville last year, I mean, you can he essentially redshirted last year, right? So if you think about that, then you can argue that, hey, and he, he has buddy Travis Etienne Jr., healthy. All right, thanks everybody. Nice little rookies and star break. Great football talk. Here's all the sort of the main quarterbacks that we're kind of looking at here. All card ship. So a lot of you will be getting a lot of stuff in the mail. Hopefully some good rookies. A lot of grading opportunities here. So a lot of fun stuff in rookies and stars. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was a 40 box Serial box edition break of 2021 Rookies and Stars football. 
uh, pick your team too. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.